So, all right, we're going to get started, folks, because we're just missing one person right now, um, to my knowledge, and uh, it's a student who has been on campus a few times, so uh, I'm not totally worried, but I'm hoping he does check in, uh, and I'll see him pop up there. All right, so I got a group of people in front of me and some people out there, welcome, okay? And I'm gonna try and stay within the camera for you folks, and Todd's filming me over here. Well, my name is Mike Colleen. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Alpena Community College. You are all here today to try and get into what we consider one of our marquee programs, our one-year certificate in utility technology. You wanna be a line worker, right? Okay, and as we mentioned, some of you have been waiting on a wait list for some time, and now you're here, the time has come. So we do this every year. Typically we do this with 60 plus people, 60 students, their friends and family. We get 180 people all of a sudden in our theater. Well, the world today, we can't do that. So here we are, we're breaking these up. We had a session earlier today with some students who were here on campus. We're doing this one. Everybody here who's joining us today, besides a couple, um, are students who are currently not on campus. Okay, currently not on campus. So. Um, uh, you, you're new coming here, so we got to go over a number of different things. I typically have a, um, about a 45 minute PowerPoint presentation that I do on services, policies, timelines, information you need to know in order to be a successful student at ACC. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that for you folks, because ultimately you're here for this. But what I am going to do for all of you is I have a packet of information right here. All of you will be sent this packet of information and it covers everything that I cover in my orientation. Bookstore hours, how to contact financial aid, how do I set up a test in the testing center, where do I get a tutor from, whatever it may be is in here. The deadline of when I have to pay, when's my drop ad deadline, how do I get a transcript, who do I talk to in the registrar's office. It's all in here. It talks about services like our library, our testing center, our wellness center, which is our, which is our um, fitness center on campus. All that's in there, and I'm, so I'm telling you about it. My presentation goes much longer, but it also covers a lot of information for what I call our general education transfer students. And most of you are here for what I call these employability skills, these one-year certificate, two-year associate, terminal program, because when you're done here, you want to go to work. You're not necessarily looking at a four-year bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a doctorate degree. And I totally understand that, okay? So the goal today primarily is I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Roy Smith. We have somebody here from Bachelor Industries. For all of you up on the, uh, on, on the video board, I emailed all of you this morning one of our tool lists, the, the 2021 tool list. It should have been sent to the same email that you all received this email in. You're gonna to wanna to refer to that because we're gonna go over all the tools, all the requirements, and what you need to do to make sure your tools are ordered by the deadline, which I believe the form says July 5th, to make sure they're here, all here delivered properly for when school starts on August 30th. And that's the key thing. Classes do start on Monday, August 30th, so please keep that in mind. Not after Labor Day, that's the week before Labor Day. So for any of you who may think about having a summer job or maybe a, a late summer vacation or something like that, classes start August 30th. So make sure you're aware of that, okay? And the other key thing that you're gonna have to know is that tuition is gonna be due by Friday, I think it's August 6th. Either, it's the first Friday in August. It's either August 6th or 7th. That's when tuition's gonna be due. Because you see, a lot of the students here for those of you back at home, they all fill out a registration statement, a registration form. And I'm gonna take care of all of you who are up on the video board based on your attendance here. When I process this, it's gonna print out a registration statement which will have your class schedule and all your tuition information. My fingers are crossed, I'm gonna have all that in the mail to all of you within the next two weeks. I'm gonna say by May 1st, by May 1st. Tuition is due by the first Friday of August. So if you have financial aid questions, if you need to apply for a student loan, if you've got scholarships that need to be sent here, or you need to get a summer job to make as much money as possible, you've got till August 6th or 7th. 
Students who are not paid by August 7th, I say this very nicely, and I'm gonna be nicer to all of you than I was with the guys earlier, because they're here, they know me. I'm realistically a pretty nice guy, for those of you who don't know me, all right? If you don't pay by August 6th or 7th, your classes will be dropped. I likely will not call you, and your spot in this program will be given to another student, is I have 200 people in line behind you. It is that simple. I have 200 people in line behind you. I do not have to chase you to fill spots. We will have a full program. You currently have one of those coveted 60 seats because you're here today, okay? But one of the most important things you gotta do is pay. That's the responsible thing, all right? And it's by August 6th or 7th, all right? It'll be highlighted. I'll make sure you all know that date for sure, okay? If you have any questions when we get late July, about your financial aid, about your student loan, about your scholarships, do you have any balance? Call, leave a message. And for those of you out there in video land, along with you here, if you leave a message, make sure your cell phone's voicemail is set up. Because I'm here to tell you my rule is, if somebody calls me and I call you back and, you fail, and your voicemail's not set up, I don't call again. I call once. You see that I call, you see a missed call, if it's important, you call me back, but I'm not chasing you. I wasn't able to leave you a message. Once again, that's a responsibility thing, and my guess is Mr. Smith would tell you that eventually employers are gonna to wanna to call you and they're gonna call that cell phone. You probably are gonna want that message, aren't you? You probably are gonna want that employer to leave you a message so you can follow up with them because you might be able to get a job for 35 bucks an hour. I wouldn't want something simple like my voicemail box is full or it's not set up to lose that opportunity. So please, take care of those things. We're growing up, we're getting into life now, we're becoming an adult, many of us are moving away from home. You're coming to Alpena to go to school, we're gonna be, we're gonna take ownership in our future, and we're gonna get it done, and we are here to help. We are here to help. I have zero problem saying that the instructors that you have are some of the hardest working <laughs> instructors on this campus, and they are always here. When students tell me, well I can't find Mr. Artley, my answer is, then you aren't looking. Well, I don't know where Mr. Smith's office is. I can't see him. He is here all the time. The guys in this building, the guys who work in this program are here because they're workers. They've been out in the industry. They've been out in the real world. And they understand that they've got to be accessible and available for their students, and they are. Okay? So I don't buy the fact that, you know, now maybe if you send him an email in the middle of July and he's fishing or golfing, I'll take that, but not during the regular school year. All right? That makes sense. All right? The other thing I want to cover before I turn over to Mr. Smith is housing. I know I've talked to a number of you over the, over the last year, and if you are interested in staying on campus, our on-campus housing, I hope that many of you have submitted an application for that on-campus housing. If you have not, I strongly encourage you to do so. We have room for 64 students in our on-campus housing. They're four-bedroom townhouses. We have room for 64 students. It fills every year if it's not already close to being full, if not full already. But that should not keep you from still submitting your housing application if it's an option. The housing application is free. It's available on our website. Click the housing link at the bottom of the page, and you're going to be able to get the housing application submitted. Now, you do not have to stay on campus. You can stay off campus, you can stay wherever you want to. On our housing page, there is a link with an off-campus housing directory. Now folks, that directory is simply a listing of people in Alpena who will rent to college students if they have availability. There is no guarantee that all those places are available, but there's a lot of places out there. And then I know there are some places that sometimes some utility tech students have stayed over the years. About seven, eight miles um, west of town is a resort out on Long Rapids Road called Norway Resort that some people have stayed at. It's a great place if you like to fish, the river's right across the street, okay? Those are some options as well, and if you're interested in any of those options, contact me and I will certainly get you that contact information. I have zero problem with that. With that said, like I said, I'm going to get you all registered for classes because of your attendance today. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Smith and let him probably say a few words about the program. 
and then um, we're going to turn over to the bachelor rep. But what I want to say for those of you out there in video land, I know it's a little harder, rather than you guys sitting here. If any of you have any questions, hey Colin, I need you to mute your microphone. Colin, if you can hear me, I need you to mute your microphone. Colin, you need to mute your microphone. Everybody needs to mute their microphones because we can hear you talking. There you go, Colin. Sorry. You're good. Perfect. It gives a lot of feedback. That's the problem, okay? Just to, to, to read the bottom of the screen there, it'll say mute or unmute. Okay, perfect. And then somebody else is still talking. It might be your calling user. Whoever's the calling user, you're the only one not muted. I can hear your mom or somebody talking in the background. And Colin, you're still not muted, so hopefully you can figure that out. Or just be real quiet. Okay? All right? So the world of video, uh, video stuff, folks, I, I'm, I'm used to it now. A year ago, this would have threw me for a loop. Now it happens all the time. Okay? So with that said, I'm going to try and see if I can mute her um, and go from there. But if any of you have any questions at any time, you need to unmute, ask your question. Or um, I do have somebody monitoring the chat room. Okay? If you want a question, you can put a question in the chat room and the person will jump in and, uh, and, and, and interrupt us. Okay? So with that said, I'm going to see if I can mute you all. Which I think I can. Mute all. Cool. Perfect. Can you guys give us a thumbs up if you can still hear us? There you go. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Okay, this is Mr. Roy Smith. He's going to talk a little bit more about the program before we turn it over to the bachelor. Thanks, Roy. Our rule here at ACC is as long as I stay nine feet away from you, I can take my mask off. But so I'm going to try and stay on this side of the tables. So I'm a lot more comfortable talking without the mask on. But uh, welcome to ACC. I know that some of you have been waiting as long as two years to get here and so on. Um, you know, this program that we've built here has gotten a good reputation. That good reputation, of course, has led to a lot of people wanting to come here and making it uh, more of a, I won't say it's a limited entry because we are an open enrollment community college, so we still go by application date and so on for, for people to get in. But I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I think you'll enjoy your time here. I hope you will. If not, if you don't enjoy it within the first couple of weeks, you better let us know because I think you probably picked the wrong occupation for you then. Because, uh, you know, you got to, to like this and want to do this. Hopefully most of you are types of fellows that uh, like the outdoors. And like working out in the outdoors and being out there whenever you can. Uh, you know, typically, you know, guys who are good athletes and stuff in high school or maybe uh, sportsmen that really enjoy hunting and fishing and going out in all kinds of weather to do that kind of crazy stuff when normal people wouldn't be uh, are the guys that do really well in, in this program typically. Um, again, Mike said we start 60 a year. We break you into two different main groups and four subgroups, I guess you'd call it, so that you'll never have more than 30 students in a class with you, at least in the classes that are labeled APP or UTT. You know, typically, this classroom right here in a non-COVID year, we would have all 30 students in front of us in the classroom. This year, because of COVID, we've had to divide it up in two, using this VCS system where the instructor will be in one classroom, half the class in front of them, half the class in the other classroom, and bouncing back and forth. What this fall is going to bring yet, we don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll be back to where we can all be in, in one group. Uh, probably the best way for us to be assured that is if as many of you get your immunizations as you can. I'm not saying that you have to yet. I don't know what the college policy is going to be by next fall. You've probably seen on the news and so on that a lot of colleges are starting to where you've got to have the immunization in order to attend. Our college has not done that yet, uh, but I'm not sure if they won't, depending upon what continues to happen with the COVID in our local area right here, which right now isn't good. Uh, the outbreak has been, this latest outbreak has hit this area and the young people in this area pretty hard. Fortunately, not bad here at the college. I think we've had three students out in the last week 
um, but it, it, it hasn't been like half the guys are gone or anything like that. It's been pretty good. Uh, so, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, I think, like I said, if you're that type of person that enjoys working out in all kinds of weather, you'll enjoy it. You'll spend about a third of your time uh, here in outdoor field classes. You'll spend about a third of your time in a lecture room like this one here, and probably about a third of your time in labs like we have across the hall over there. It's a fairly well-balanced thing. You'll get plenty of hands-on time, but you will, and there is an academic portion to it as well just as there is in an apprentice program once you leave here and go to work for a utility. Now, uh, one of the things that you might have been used to in high school was 65 and survive. You know, getting that D, getting a 65% or so average and, and surviving in classes. That doesn't work here and it doesn't work in apprentice programs for the college. In you know, line work or apprenticeship programs that we work with, most of them want 85% or higher grade point average. So you need to work hard while you're here in order to obtain that and, and to keep that. You must have a 2.0 average, which is a C average, in your, in your classes in order to get the diploma and stuff from us. Okay, so it's important that you uh, buckle down and you try hard. There are lots of resources here to make sure that you're successful. Okay, besides having full-time journeyman instructors, um, like myself as a journeyman lineman, Todd Hartley, who's operating the camera back here for us, is a uh, licensed master electrician. I've been here for 26 years. Todd, you've been here? Uh, 16 full time and then five prior, so. Five prior, okay. And then we've got uh, Mike Gattrip and Paul Gamage, and we've got an entire retiring instructor who probably poke his head in here once in a while today and stuff, Mark Swanson, or Swanee. There's Swanee. Swanee, though, is, is retiring, so hopefully, that's what we said last year, but we were able to bring him back this year when we wound up with problems with an instructor getting ill. Swanee came back to teach for us again this year, so. About but time. Next fall, <laughs> next fall, he's made it very clear to us that he's gonna be elk hunting in Idaho. And uh, there ain't gonna be hell, high water, or anything else that's gonna stop that hunt from going on, so. Uh, I'm happy that he's finally able to do that. He's talked about it for years, and so on. We've worked together for years, uh, and established some really good relationships with Consumers Energy, and with a lot of other utilities to help you guys get employed when you get out of here. So, uh, what we expect from you is effort when you're here. Uh, you know, I mentioned before that we want you to have good grades, but perfect grades aren't necessarily what these employers and stuff are looking for either. One of the things they do look for down here is as close to perfect attendance as you can get. Now, obviously, we don't want you here if you're not if you're ill or you're not feeling right. But what we mean by perfect attendance basically is that you show up to class on time with your tools. And for some classes, that might just be a notebook and a calculator or whatever. In other classes, of course, that means that you're on the field or in the shop at the appropriate time with your tools and equipment and ready to go. Because come November and December, we only got about eight hours of daylight up here. And uh, you know we're out in the field at that entire time period of that, there, that there's daylight. It broke into two hour groups, 15 guys at a time out there. So we need you prepared and ready for class and, and ready to work hard. Uh, we will work with you, but what if, Perfect attendance also means it's like out there in the field and stuff. You know, you might be anxious to talk to your buddies who you haven't seen since the Friday before when you all left and went home and maybe you had some really good fishing or hunting that weekend and you're anxious to tell everybody, but the instructor's over here trying to get class started. We don't want two guys over here talking and stuff, you know, not the kind of work that we're doing and the safety aspects of it and stuff. We need to have your attention and your focus and stuff with us and ready to go. So that's what I mean by perfect attendance and so on. Now, we also run it like a job. So if you're going to be absent for the day, we expect to hear that you're going to be absent for the day before you're absent for the day. You know, just like you'd have to call your employer wherever you work and stuff, if you're going to be absent, that's the way that we handle it. Okay, and again, the thing is, is everybody that's teaching here, and Mike mentioned it and so on, we worked and did this kind of work prior to this. Myself, I had, um, nine years in the Navy as an electronic technician on nuclear submarines and then two years of 
doing office equipment and copiers and that type of thing and then finally got into an apprenticeship at a power company and so on after I went to school here. I was rating you guys with seats 31 years ago. Okay. And then I became an apprentice lineman and, and then the company that I worked for relied upon this school so much for new employees and so on and participated in actually getting this school going that when the instructor that was here was retiring, they placed the job opening on the company bulletin board and that's where I saw it. I used to work for a company called Top of Michigan. It's now part of Great Lakes Energy. Uh, four electric co-ops in the state merged to become Great Lakes Energy. And I worked out of Boyne City, Michigan, and that's where I went through my apprenticeship. But I was originally from this side of the state, not Skoda. And at that time, my parents were starting to get elderly and so on. And uh, I thought, you know, it'd be nice if I could be a little bit closer to them and, and uh, have a lot of family in this area and stuff. So I was able to come back. And now, all of a sudden, that's 26 years ago. You know, so I've been here for quite some time. Uh, you heard how long Todd's been here. Paul Gamage, other full-time instructor, was with me in that first class 31 years ago and teaches here now as well. He worked for the uh, IBEW, or International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Contractors, that support all of the electric utilities and municipals and stuff in the state. And then we've got Mike Attrip, uh, and Mike was also a uh, journeyman lineman with the contractors and stuff. And he's been at it, what, I think about 20 years now about 20 years experience, a little bit young. He's the, the junior instructor in the group. And so on. so we've been at this for a while, but uh, we've all worked out there in industry. We all got our certifications and stuff out there in the industry and have a pretty good idea what it takes. And I think this is probably about the only school like this one in the state of Michigan anyway, where you'd be having journeyman linemen or master electricians or something for your pretty much all of your classes. Exception would be maybe math class, uh, job search strategies, some of those types of classes. But we all support those types of classes as well. And so on. So, anybody have any questions so far? I've been rambling on. Any, any of you guys out there, if, uh, you know, you'd have to unmute your mic or whatever, or Mike would have to unmute you and, and, and put you in. But if you have a question or anything, don't feel, uh, don't be afraid to, to jump in and, and get it answered, because today's the day to do that. As Mike was mentioning, we need you to get your you know, classes signed up, paid on time, and that type of thing, because there is, as more, all of you guys know, I haven't got to go on too much. All of you have been on a waiting list and stuff to get in here, but if for some reason, you've got to be smart this next year. You've got to be smart all the time, be a line worker, but you've got to be especially smart. Don't get yourself in trouble with drugs or alcohol, period. Okay. You get in trouble with any of that, there isn't an employer in this industry that's going to look at you. You've got to stay away from that stuff. Don't get an MIP. Don't get an operating under the influence of anything. Uh, you know, stay away from that stuff. If your friends are doing that kind of stuff and you're with them or whatever, you know, especially uh, if it's uh, marijuana or anything like that, you got to get away from it. You know, you, you can't be around that. So the employers, like Consumers Energy, they take this so serious is that at your employment physical, they pull a hair and they check the hair follicles for THC content and stuff, and that stuff will stay in there for six months. Okay, so you've got to be careful about that kind of thing and stay away from it. If you've been drinking, the obvious thing is don't drive. Don't let a drunk person drive you either but don't drive. Get somebody who hasn't been drinking, a designated driver, or a parent, an uncle, a cousin, something like that to come pick you up because it's not worth risking this career. You know, every year we have students who for some reason that happens to. Once they're here already, they've already invested 10, 12, $15,000 on their education. Get right here toward graduation time, and boom, get done. Just once is all it takes. You get that ticket, get that conviction, I, you could be the best one in the class, best climber, best equipment operator. You're not going to get a job in this field. You've got to be able to get the, the tools to the job site legally, and that means a commercial driver's license, so, which you can get and obtain while you're here. So enough about that, enough about it. Uh, trying to think of anything we've missed here. Todd, anything you can think of? 
We have high expectations for you. We expect you to do well. You know, we'll just give you an example. We just had a 10-week class go down to consumers. The 10-week class is basically their last shot before they get offered a job by consumers. We sent five students down to make up part of a class, class of 16 people. Our group, though, was only five people. Our people finished the top five. So out of the job openings that they had last time, our guys got their pick on which job openings they wanted and stuff. You know, we like it when that happens, obviously, and it, it, it happens on a fairly regular basis for the students who go here. They tend to do very, very well in their apprentice schools afterwards. IBW H76, which is the local for outside linemen in the state of Michigan for everywhere except the Thumb and uh, Southeast Michigan, you know, the Upper Peninsula and all the rest of the Lower Peninsula were on campus to recruit people and so on about two weeks ago now and to make sure that they had a heads up on when they were opening the books for those guys to get on and sign up for apprenticeships and so on with them. And I suspect they'll be starting their interview processes here with them real soon. The last few years, employment here in Michigan has been very good. Employment in the region, if we were to look at uh, you know the Midwest region and stuff, has been outstanding. And if a student's not work that graduated's not working in this field, it's because they don't want to. There's been job openings out there. And uh, you know, some great job openings. Consumers, an exception on the high side, $38.20 an hour to start. You know, the uh, rural electric cooperatives, a lot of the munis and stuff like that, you're looking at you know, the mid-20s and up for the most part. So we're talking about good, uh, what do you want to call it, life-sustaining jobs. I mean, not just a good quality of life, sustaining jobs. One of the few types of jobs that I can think of that if they want to, you know, a married couple, one spouse can work and still make uh, a living for the family. And unfortunately, there aren't that many of those types of jobs left. A lot of them are in the electric utility industry between uh, dispatchers and system operators and uh, power plant operators and mining and stuff, we still have been able to uh, do quite well. So, you know, it's, uh, most of your linemen in the state of Michigan right now are somewhere between $115,000 and $200,000 a year off the good incomes. When you, doing, uh, you want to talk about the travel? They're not going to get jobs at home? Yeah, that's the big thing there. I mean, yeah, employment in this region's been good, but to guarantee you a job in your hometown, I don't think, you know, we can do that. If you're from here in Alpena, you know, we got Alpena Power Company, a rather small electric utility with about 10 linemen in the whole company. You know, you're only going to have an opening in that company once every three years or so for a lineman who might be retiring. Uh, generally speaking, when people become linemen, they stay linemen, or they get advanced in their companies within the line worker category you know, so that uh, they don't leave. So it almost takes somebody retiring before there's openings and so on. But right now, there's a big rush of us baby boomers. <laughs> They're finishing up our working years. And uh, consumers especially, but a lot of these utilities didn't do a lot of hiring for a lot of years, and this big group of baby boomers is retiring, making a lot of room for young bud to come into to the trade. And that's one of the reasons that employment's been excellent in, in recent years. Anything you'd like to add, Swanee? Okay. No, just that we have they are. past students working all over this country. Thanks. I mean, they're out east. We have one student who's in Alaska, living his dream, doing line work. He works, what, almost like 30 days on, two weeks off, you know, with pay. But don't think that, don't put all your eggs in one basket thinking consumers are something, you know, because there's a lot of good companies out there to work for other than consumers if you're willing to move away from home. You know, go, I tell all my past students, go where your hobbies are. Do you like to snow ski? You know, out east, out west, you know. Go where you... When you have time off, you actually enjoy your time off, you know. You got something that you enjoy doing, you know. Because you got to have a life other than work. 
And it's hard to, for me to say that. It took me a long time to learn that because I never turned down a minute of overtime for a lot of years. But go where your hobbies are, you know. There's a lot of good paying companies, a lot of beautiful places in this country to work at, you know. It don't have to be right here at home. You know, if you don't like the snow, hey, get out of it. <laughs> you know, I, my youngest son is in Kansas. They get a little bit of snow, maybe a little bit of ice, but he'll never come back to Michigan to work. You know, the days of him putting on long underwear and wearing winter boots and car hearts and stuff, that's long gone, you know. It's not going to happen, you know. He likes where he's at out there. But I always say, go where your hobby is, you know, whatever it be, you know. And if the hobby's the wife or the girlfriend and she's from not, not from here, you might want to go with her too and keep things happy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, no priority. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, but what, there's a lot of, to what Swanee's saying. The one young man that we have that's up there, he works for uh, Alaska Villages Co-op. And if they go and travel from village to village in Alaska, depending upon where the construction needs and stuff are. And, uh, you know, he's constantly sending us back pictures of him with all of these coho salmon and chinook salmon and the moose that he shot and the wolf that he shot and the grizzly bear. You know, I mean, he's, he's just, he's living his dream, as Swanee said. You know, and uh, it, I grew up in this area of the state and so on, and I love to hunt and fish, but even in my time in the Navy, I found out, you know what? There's other places where that's really good, too. You know, and even though I was stationed in San Diego, I found spots in San Diego County in Southern California that I could still limit out on trout. You know, there, there's great places all across this country to go work. You know, and I work for a smaller company. Great Lakes Energy has is, is gotten pretty big, but it was top of Michigan Little Electric Co-op. We had 40,000 customers. Yeah, journeyman lineman wage was probably a buck and a half, two dollars an hour less than what the guys made at consumers and stuff. But I loved where I lived, and I loved the guys I was working with. I didn't feel a need to, to move from there. You know, and a lot of guys don't. They get into you know some of these munis or co-ops, or those working for the uh, for the contractors. The contractors right now aren't paid as high an hourly rate as the guys that work at the consumers. But the guys who work for the contractor, the contractor contribution to their retirement program is 26% of their income. That's, you know, that's not you putting it in or anything. That's them putting in 26% of what you make. A lot of these guys, by the time they get done with their four-year apprenticeship, already have over $100,000 in their retirement accounts. By the time they're my age, you know, they're looking at being multi-millionaires. It, it's pretty awesome. So, you know, there's there's great ways to go about it. But retirement don't mean anything if you don't have fun along the way. And I get a guy in the swine. You know, you gotta have fun during your time off and stuff. Man, when I was raising kids and I had those expenses and stuff, I worked, you know, all the overtime I could too. But, you know, there comes a point in life where that overtime chasing and making the great big money isn't as fun as it used to be. So, so. Okay, uh, anything else? I think covered pretty good. Swan, Todd, Mike? Questions, guys? Yeah, if there's any questions, like I said, for those of you at home right now, I did email you the tool list. You're going to want to pull that out or look at that as they're going through here. So I'm going to turn it over to our bachelor representative. And uh, I can play with the camera and get him a little more on the camera. We also have one of our current students, Brandon Buckmaster, who Agreed to be modeled for this. Oh, uh, he seems to be, no, he's got them on. Okay, I was thinking he was missing his gaff guards, but that's only because he's not wearing bright yellow ones. He's got his gaff guards on uh, and so on. But uh, we'll talk individually right down the list pretty much about all the tools and equipment. The one thing I do want to say about the tools and equipment and why we have Bashlin here is 31 years ago Bashlin came here <coughs> and they uh, came right to class and so on. We've made the offer to lots of different tool companies and stuff, but Bashlin's is the one that's been here every year with the manufacturer's rep with great prices and they also come then in the fall when they're issuing and you're getting your tool to help you get the tools right, making sure they're properly sized, making sure that you get everything that you've ordered and if anything is wrong on your order they've made the correction and gotten the person the right stuff within a couple of days so you know it's not often that we find that type of that level of customer services and stuff nowadays and uh, that's why bashlands is here 
you can get your tools from other people. We're not saying you have to use Bashlin tools or anything, but those prices that he give you and the quality of their tools, it is good stuff. It is, it is really good stuff. Cool. I'm Bud Cadwell from Bashlin. Like I said, I've only been coming up here for six years, and one thing that I was told when I came up here was after uh, our good buddy Russ Romano started really coming up here was, don't mess this up. That was basically what it was. And it's really, it's really easy. Uh, the products that we make here pretty much take care of themselves. Everything is manufactured by hand in Grove City, Pennsylvania. It's an hour north of Pittsburgh. If by some chance you ever find yourself in that area, give us a call. Or we open our uh, manufacturing facility for touring every day of the week that we're open. Friday's not a good day because they work flex time and most people are gone. We're starting our weekend about 9 o'clock on a Friday. So. Um, First of all, when you look at this tool list, one thing I want you guys to look at is, are you right-handed or left-handed? Any southpaws in here? Any southpaws out there? Easy, okay. Then, uh, just make sure that when you do this, you just, everybody, put what hand you are, right-handed, so we know we're good on everything, okay? Uh, Roy, after 30-some years, and the six years that I'm coming in here, we've had, a con we, at one time, I think this was two. This two had two sides on it. You know what I mean? There's more products on here than I think is in the catalog that's over here. Uh, so they pretty skinny this up to what has worked best for the program and the best products for you to learn. The first belt that we have on this list is going to be the belt that. What's your name again? Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon is wearing here. It's just bait four D ring stack belt. Uh, tongue of buckles on the bottom. All leather, leather lining, that's one of those things where you don't skimp on that. We talked about though, want to be cheap on something, be, don't be cheap on your hand tools and the tools to get the job done for you. Leather, I've always been a big leather fan. Leather, wipe it down, clean it. I mean, you, how long have you had your belt, Roy? I mean, I'm sure you probably got one once you started. It might have shrunk, but. Yeah, well, actually, my original belt is still over there on a loaner for students and stuff because my butt grew since I went here. <laughs> But that was 31 years ago, and I felt still in service. So, so I mean, that was just one of those things. I mean, these guys bought these for one time. They were spending their own money like you guys are. Spend good money, get good stuff. The only difference is belts back in that era only had two feet rings. It was what we call the free climb era, mm -hmm. when we didn't have to wear fall restraints and stuff when we went up and down poles or towers. But that all changed in April of 2015, and now fall restraint belts are mandatory. Yeah, for good reason, and it has eliminated a lot of the falling injuries that used to, to actually, it used to be false that killed as many or more linemen than uh, electrocutions mm -hmm. did. And uh, this has put a, almost a complete stop to that kind of accident. I won't say a complete stop because it has to be properly adjusted to the pole that you're climbing on and stuff to work properly. Well, then we have an odd. Uh, I'm just going to go jump to the other belt. Now, down at the bottom, you'll see optional tools. I'm going to show you the other belt as well that's on here. It's the exact same belt as this. It just has the addition of a gut strap on it. So basically, it's the same exact belt. This one just has an extra quick release buckle on the top that you can adjust that. A little more support in the back area. Uh, Works really nice, especially for those of you maybe that have a longer torso. Some of the guys that are shorter in stature or whatever that without the longer torso might not want it, but uh, you know, it can be nice to have the extra support. I like it because if I need to bend over and get something, it's easy for me, you know. But uh, so basically, like I said, they're exact same belt. Um, whichever one you guys decide to go with, they're going to fit the same, feel the same. So. Now, the second thing that's going to be going down the list is going to be your secondary rope lanyard, which is what he has here. That is going to be what you're using when you make your transitions over an obstacle. In, in use with this. This goes over the top, get safe over your obstacle, then you'll disconnect your fall restraint, take a couple steps up, go back into your fall restraint, disconnect your secondary, carry on with your climb, reverse that on the way down. Okay, what that does, that gives you your 100% fall protection. So if you do fall, it's minimal. You're not making impact with the ground. And technically, you shouldn't go anything more than two feet. Most places now are actually requiring that when you get past your obstacle, you go back into your fall restraint so you don't have that tendency to maybe go a little bit higher than what you would. It's a good habit to get into. 
So then after that, the climbers. They've all spec'd out our bashful aluminum climber. We've been making this since before you started. Roy still got his original yeah. pair too. This has been basically our best seller for all time. Uh, aluminum, lightweight, gives you your flexibility. And a lot of, I mean, consumers, for example, that's what, if you work for consumers, unless you bring your own climber, that's pretty much the climber that they're going to give you. Bashful has the offset to their climber that some companies don't that, uh, it's just more comfortable and seems to grab the pole better. You know, there's some that have a straighter climber requiring you to keep your leg at a much greater angle in order to keep penetration of the gas into the pole uh, consistently. Uh, Bashlands is, you know, the most copied of the climbers. Yeah, which is a good compliment. You know, it's one of those things, if somebody's going to copy it, it means you're doing the right thing. And like I said, we've been doing that for years and years over. We're going to continue. This is the, uh, the Velcro pad that you see on here. The pad and climber is on one kit in here. And it will also come with the gaff guards on it too, so you're pretty good. And also, you're all set with everything you need. One thing that will, you will be required to have is the heel protection. You'll see that. That's uh, right underneath the climbers. If you bring your own climbers in, you'll still need to purchase something like this or an equivalent. Okay, that's one yeah, of I don't know if you can see it on Brandon's climber right there, but what it does is protect this area of your boot. And why that's important is, so especially when guys are learning to climb, they have one in there and they go to stick their other one in the pole. Students have been known to miss and stick it right into their other foot. I got a couple of nicks in mine. Pardon? I got a couple of nicks in mine. You got a couple of nicks. Yeah. In previous years, I'd have been taking them to the emergency room to get stitched up. You know, on, on a lot of these guys, so it's an important thing. And I, you know, as you all know, a trip to the emergency room now, a low low cost would be 500 bucks, right on up to a thousand or more. Uh, and these things are pretty cheap insurance against uh, gaffing yourself. We've been very, very fortunate that nobody stuck their Achilles tendon or anything like that over the years. Uh, you know, we've been very fortunate, but that's not going to happen as long as you got those installed on your climber. And then you just poked a hole in your $250, $300 pair of boots, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's insult to injury on top of it. Okay, so after that, I mean, then you're going to go in your tool holster, five pocket uh, five with the nice scabbard on it, okay, for stowage of that. Basically, it's going to hold all the hand tools that are on this list. Um, the hand tools that are on this list, <coughs> you can get an equivalent to them somewhere else if you choose to, you know, but the thing about it is you're getting a good price on these. Anybody who's used hand tools for a while knows you don't cheat yourself on hand tools. Don't cheat yourself on shoes. You know, that's what you make your money in. That's what you're going to be standing on all day long. That's what you're going to be on the wood on is your shoes and your hand tools help get that job done and get you home. You know, so, uh, so then we're going to, after that we get into tools, you've got nut and bolt bag, plain Jane. They've always used this one. There's alternatives out there if you want to look on our website. Call in, talk to Stacy, or even myself. Stacy uh, Hockenberry's information is on the top. She does all the handles, all the accounts for here. So if you have any questions on pricing, whatever the school pricing is for here, we turn that in to uh, any other product you want. Like uh, we have a one with the uh, magnet on that everybody likes, the magnet nut bowl bag. Just call her and give her exactly what product number is. She'll give you what student pricing would be. We yeah. went with the lowest cost one on these just because. Uh, well, they're convenient still. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can carry your extra washer or nut or whatever up there anyway. As any of our students can tell you when they're first learning, if they drop a washer or nut, it doesn't matter. They had another bull sack on them anyway. They're coming down the pole and picking it up and going back up. You know, it's just kind of the penalty you pay for if you drop something. Like I said, and get what you need. If there's something you need to nickel and dime and get a few parts and pieces here and there and decide later you want to get more of it, you, all you do is you call us and we're going to extend that student pricing the whole time you're in the program. This isn't a hurry up buy it all now or lose a deal on it. It's just, hey, we, we support this uh, program by continuing this. And a lot of times the guys even call us when they've gone out in the contract world, they're still spending their own money to buy their stuff. Hey, do we still get that deal? It's an honor system. We always take care of you guys. You know what I mean? It's real hard to spend a lot of money until you're making money, you know? So, um, and after that, skinny knife. There's a lot of different versions that are out here. This is the one that's on the tool list. I think he's got a uh, Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee version. Klein makes another folding version if that's what you want. It all depends on what you... This has been around for, I can't even tell you how many years, you know, before... That big handle works really nice when you're wearing big bulky rubber gloves. Yep. 
So after that, inside folding rule. You know, it fits down in your holster here. It's a necessity to have to. We don't want anybody up there with a the metal tape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, lineman's pliers, like I said, these are the things where you get into, okay, what is it, just for example on here, 33 bucks for a pair of these pliers, that's, you know, you're not going to beat that price on there, so spend the money on them. Anything else, when you get into something that isn't designed for this trade and you try to use a tool that's not designed for it, you go to cut something, you know, you look at your jaws, you can see daylight through them, you got nothing left in there. So then this just become a hammer. Uh, channel locks. Channel locks you'll use on a lot of different applications here. Demo screwdriver. The demo driver, the only difference between that is it's got the metal cap that goes all the way through. So when you're driving it into the uh, hole, which a lot of guys say they do that more than they actually turn screws with it, you're not damaging the screwdriver itself. So Use that to help prevent the hand line from sliding down a pole and stuff like that. So, you know, it's pounded into the pole more than it's used as a screwdriver. Presser wrench, somewhere. Standard 10 inch. And the only thing, this, this is just a Klein version. It's got a, a rubber coating on the outside of it. Any presser wrench you got will suffice. Uh, hammer, it's a waffle face hammer. Roy likes the waffle face for driving staples. You get more bite on it. Um, the other thing is, is that don't get, you can get any hammer you want to really. No metal shaft on it. That's the only thing they ask for. So you got a hammer laying around at home. Feel free to use that. Hard half, we they got the uh, ball cap version on here. A lot of guys use the wide brim. This is what, if you order everything just off of this list, this is one you're gonna get. If you want a wide brim one, once again, call Stacy or myself, we'll give you the part number to change it over to what that is, and then we'll give you the pricing on it too. Uh, bug wrench. I, if you've already got a hard hat or you get one given to you or something, as long as it's a type E, has the electrical rating on it, you can bring that hard hat and use it. I tell you what, nobody complains about having this on, on them, do you? No? You know what I mean? So it's just, what can you say about a rationing wrench? Open it, you know, so it's a through wrench. Um, Handline carrier. I tell these guys, I mean, we throw one in, one in here for you. If you want another one, buy another one. Get these serve a purpose. Anybody who's been around knows the purpose behind these. We have that conversation. This is designed for going up and down if you're carrying a handline or anything that you want to have on here. If it were to get snagged on anything, 15 pounds of pressure will open up and put that on the ground instead of pull pulling on you and pulling you into a bad spot or pulling you to the ground. Not so much now that you've got your protection on, but that's a, be another problem. Something get fouled up at that, like we were talking about with a, rope, a flyaway rope getting caught by a truck, and pull him off the pole. It's not going to pull you off the pole. It's just going to rip, and the truck's not going to know, or any vehicle's not going to know that they got a hold of you. So, then you get into your gear bags. Typical uh, standard gear bag that we utilize has always been this one. This has been around since Roy has started here, minus the strap. He never got the strap on it. Mine was canvas instead of the whatever material. Yeah, it's poly now. It's got a rain flap on it, so inclement weather, unroll that. Um, roll it over. Shoulder straps really nice to have. It just takes off. I mean, it's a pain in the butt trying to carry these things out out here like this, especially for a small guy like me. Now, th this one here is your other option. It's down in optional tools. This is a backpack duffel. Last year is the first year we put the zipper inside. I think you use one of these, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And you got any problems with it? No. You fit a lot of stuff in here. You know what I mean? We, we did very, very well with this for a lot of years. And then finally one time the guys are like, hey, put a zipper in the side of that because I always need whatever I put in it first. And then two years ago, I came back from the range and emptied out my range bag and my range bag was all high vis inside. Well, that used to be black inside. So now if you notice it's orange inside. So you can see what's going on in there. So that's another one of your optional tools. Available in camo, black, orange, and yellow. All you gotta do is let us know what color you want. Uh, the other option you're going to have to pick up is a little wrench. Everybody who got this loves this. You know, it's just a, it's another great tool to have. Um, red, white, blue is just a, it's what uh, Lowell started doing for that wrench, just so they can see it's brand recognition for them too. I think it's been around for a long time. And you'll see Klein make some stuff like that too, but Lowell actually makes a lot of the stuff for Klein. You know, it's it's kind of strange how that works anymore. 
Um, this is just another option for the climbers. If you choose not to go with the Velcro pad, you can get the leather one. This is actually the one that's on here, the brown one. I just happen to have a black one in here too. This will also come with another top strap. Okay, that's all included in the price below. And that right down there is a personal preference. I mean, these two birds right here, both go with these, if I'm not mistaken. You know, and they think that's the greatest thing ever. You know, there's a lot of guys out there who are going the opposite way and they think the Velcro's are great. So, that right there is maybe if 20 years ago they had a Velcro pad, it might be different, you know, but for the past three, four years, Velcro has been kind of going past your, your old strap pads. So, that's just, once again, personal preference and what you want to spend your money on, you know. Um, one thing you will see on here too, I want you to know everybody pay attention to, especially July 5th. It's when we need your orders in, okay? That's because all of this stuff, doesn't. we're not just sitting on a shelf somewhere. Hand tools, we don't make, we order all this leather goods or even the climbers, we manufacture all them in Grove City. So, I mean, here's a prime example. It takes about a month, believe it or not, to make a uh, set of climbers. By the time we mill, because all the, the gaps are all hand milled, all the machine work is milled, all the heat treating is done in house, and we send like a, we send them out, get them inspected, re-inspect them, it's, it's a lengthy process. So, that's why we ask for that extra little bit of time. Um, also, I always say this, you're more than welcome to have this stuff delivered to your home. I, we have always had a great, great idea, we always get it shipped here. Because then, what I come up here the day before actual tool day, and I go through everybody's order form, I put all of their stuff together, I make sure that everything they ordered is accounted for in that box. If it's not, we're on the phone, we're getting that rectified. If you get it at home, you know, we don't know if you got it, you lost it. The other thing is too, keeping this stuff here, it keeps you from, you know, wanting to start putting everything together when you may or may not know exactly what you're doing with it, you know. So. My advice, send it here. Let, let, let us deal with the storage and put it all together for you. Um, and save you some money on sales tax. Yes, that too. Which is always, saving money is the most important thing at the end of the day. Um, other than that, guys, that's really all that I can say about it. Um, we're gonna size everybody. You guys who aren't here, one, one good way to start out to measure yourself is to take your, uh, come, come on up here, Roy. You can stand up here and be my best way to, check. first of all, see how Roy's wearing his pants? You know, old fashioned style, up around his waist. Roy, Roy <laughs> back up a little bit because he's right in your way. See, you'll see yourself up there. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See how Roy's wearing his pants? Waist on his waist, not waist down here. Okay, that's how you want to wear your pants. If you wear a a 34, a good ballpark to start yourself out would be minus 10. So that would put your D size to right around a 24, okay? That, now if you got a different size behind or things like that, body shapes will alter that just a little bit. So I'm gonna show you a quick, easy way to measure yourself at home. You may or may not, here you can go ahead and do that. You may or may not have one of these, it's called a seamstress tape, they're like three bucks at a, uh, any hardware store if you can find one. What I'm looking for right here is my hip bone. So you wear this thing down here on your butt. Mm -hmm. Going from hip bone to hip bone across the top of my can. Yep. Turn around here. See where he's at right here? He's not down here and he's not up on his waistline. Okay. So now right there what he just did, he pinched where he was at. Now what's your D size? 23. Okay. If you don't have one of these, you can do the same thing with uh, a string or a small hand line. You know, you can run that around here, pinch where it's at, lay it out, measure it, okay? When in doubt, give us a call and we can have a conversation, make sure we walk you through on it too. Right on the hip bone though is where you want, you know, where your hip bone is here and here. That's where the D-rings have to stick straight out. If you get one that's too small, your D-rings are back here, you don't have as much control and it tends to slide around and be uncomfortable. You get it to where they come in here, it squeezes your hip bones together or your, your, your pelvis together and you wind up with a very sore pelvis area at the end of the day. You know, when it fits properly right off those, right off your hip bones, you can be in your belt most of the day and uh, not to be too uncomfortable. 
Did we make a video for you last year for that or no? I can't I don't remember. Think so. I can't remember. But and, and that was the thing too. Last year we didn't even have any of this as far as orientation goes, and we were right on the money with everything. I mean, I think we swapped out like maybe um, four or five belts. The cool thing is, that Buddy brings extra belts in the common sizes with him too. Yeah. So if we goof by an inch or so, he's usually got. You know, unless you're one of the biggest guys in the class or the littlest guys in your class, typically you'll have an extra spare worker or two with him. Yep. So, and like I said, so generally, and like you were saying earlier, generally, if there's an issue, we handle that right off the bat. It's a priority. I mean, it's okay. We got to have this belt up, so they'll get started on it. If we don't have it stock, they'll get started on it before I even leave here. It actually takes longer to get here than it does for us to get it manufactured for the school up here, because you guys are so far off the beaten path. You know. Which is, I love it sometimes. That's why I like coming up here. So. But it's hard to get harder to get in trouble in our town because the police station's like uh, two blocks away. It's moving. The jail, yeah, unfortunately, the jail and the police station's moving, so we won't have quite as much cop traffic as we used to. Because in order, you know, the state boys, the sheriff, the city police all took their guys to the same jail, and they'd be by here all the time. But uh, you know, we do have police right on uh, right on campus most days one officer but uh and it's not i mean a city officer not not a, a college officer but uh very safe place to go to school and so on you know you have a hard you got to work at getting in trouble in alpena uh for the most part because the state's you know 8 p.m town's dead you know there ain't a lot going on you might as well be back at your dorm or your apartment or whatever get ready for school the next day i think the most excitement i saw as far as police activity goes was at your rodeo yeah uh, oh <laughs> that guy was over here standing yeah. neck deep in that ice cold water i'm like can't you just go knock him out real quick and get in the boat before we hosted him? the lyman rodeo at the end of april in uh, 2016 and we had a guy escape from our mental ward at point east over here and when he got down there, he stripped and was butt naked and hopped into the lake to try and get away from the cops. And so we had cops all over the college property. <laughs> Nobody's watching the rodeo. We got like <laughs> three, four hundred people watching the Lyman rodeo going on, or you know, hundred and something participants. <laughs> and um, they're out there fishing this guy out of the pond across the way. It was pretty funny, actually. Probably the biggest event that happened in Opina in quite a while. I'm old. I'm old because I, if that would have been me a long time ago, they just jumped in and got you and drug you out, kicking the stream. But I guess one piece of equipment we mentioned briefly, but we haven't talked about a great deal is obviously you're going to need clothing for all types of weather. Yeah, and a good set of boots that are appropriate for line work. Okay, a good, good lineman boot has a pronounced straight heel on it to stop your climber from sliding back. For instance, this boot that I have on right here is not a lineman boot. You know, wedge boots are not lineman boots. My climber would slip right off the back of my heel and, uh, you know, it could result in a fall or at least a very uncomfortable climb down or whatever. You need a, a boot with a pronounced heel and that boot needs to have a really strong shank area. Typically, most lineman boots come with like what they call a double steel shank in them. It's stronger and it extends further in the boot than a normal steel shank. But if you're thinking about a boot for line work, a pronounced square heel, pick the boot up by the toe, pick the boot up by the heel, and try to bend it like this. If you see that boot flexing in that arch area at all, that's not a boot that you want for line work. Because that climber, as you can see, goes right across your arch. And when normally when you're walking and stuff, that ain't the part that's supporting the weight. But on a pole, that's supporting the weight. So having that steel shank to distribute that weight across the bottom of your foot is way better. If you don't have that, you get what we call crow's feet syndrome or whatever, you know. And it, it don't take long. 10 minutes, 15 minutes on the pole and you're in agony. You know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, and it's it, in a lot of the jobs, sometimes kids are up there for the whole two hours just about. You, your feet can be in agony, you know. A decent set of boots with a decent shank. You're going to expect to spend probably 180 to $300 or so. You can spend into the five to 600 range on a pair of Lima boots, like West Coast, we call them the Cadillac Lima boots. They're expensive. White, same thing. But you can find a good quality uh, Halls, Hoffman, uh, there, there's different companies out there, Chippewa, a few more that make a nice lineman boot that uh, will get you through school. And you might want to consider uh, even a winter lineman boot 
for when it's extreme, not extremely cold, but when it's cold out. And it does get cold here, believe me. Uh, you know, and there are felt pack boots that have the extra sole built in them and stuff that are the that Hoffman makes that are nice. But uh, spend your money on a on a good pair of boots to uh, for climbing. Uh, you know, again, you look up lineman boots. You'll see names like Halls and Hoffman and Westco and Whites and. Uh, sometimes, if you, you guys got a little bit of time right now, you can look out the closeout deals sometimes online too when they've got a particular model that they're selling out or whatever. You sometimes can pick them up at a really good price and so on. And Halls does a pretty good job too. They have another offer on there where it costs you a couple extra bucks, but it also guarantees your fit. You know what I mean? Where if it's the wrong size, it'll carry the return shipping to get you the right size. Last year, I don't know if they're going to do it again or not, but Hoffman Boot Company out of Kellogg, Idaho, gave a special discount code to me for my classes. And uh, it wound up being a considerable savings yeah. on, a, on a good quality boot as well. You know, I personally, I climb with a Gore-Tex lined Hoffman, but again, I was a journeyman lineman and could afford to spend a little bit of money on my boots, so I did. Because when I first started, I had Sears and Roebuck lineman boots, and uh, I was up in the air when the heel fell off my boot <laughs> when I was climbing, and climbing down without a heel on your boot uh, was a little bit That's tricky. Sketchy. Especially they were free climbing then too, so you had nothing else. I don't know why I had a bunch of drywall screws with me on the line truck, but I did, and I was able to reattach my heel down through the insole of my boot and stuff to get through the day. <laughs> And, uh, and luckily, and this was, uh, I was an apprentice and had three daughters and not a whole lot of money yet, but I had a, a very kind journeyman who happened to have a set of Westcos that he just got back off of an overhaul. And believe it or not, Westco will overhaul those lineman boots for a lot less money than buying a new pair, and he had a set of overhauled ones that he wasn't wearing that he gave to me to use until my new boots came in, so I was lucky. One thing, real quick, gloves. Forgot about ah, talking about yeah. gloves. Uh, this is a glove here, Roy and them like. It's got good dexterity. It's a Coons glove. It's made right over in Chicago. Once again, fits our dynamic. Uh, one good pair of these gloves really will get you through a climbing season. Hopefully get you through most of the year. You guys probably noticed that I didn't tell you to do that, but we should have. Yeah, oh yeah. When we took your belt measurements and stuff, I took my wallet out and stuff. If you want your hip bones and stuff to last a lot of years and this like occupation and stuff, you don't have a bunch of stuff in your pockets when you put on your lineman belt. You guys, more welcome to try. I got. I have a large and an extra large here. That seems pretty much. If you try these, you're more welcome to try one on. See what your size is. I would recommend that after you're doing that, just from over here, go ahead and. If you think you down. can get a lower price glove somewhere else that'll hold up, you're welcome to do it. But one thing that we want to see on your glove is this gauntlet. Okay, this longer gauntlet because we're using and grabbing the backside of the pole a lot when we climb and stuff. Having the extra gauntlet protects your wrist area and stuff from splinters. Because you guys will see our poles out here, after we've done them, a lot of climbing on them, look like they've been attacked by deranged porcupines. You know, I mean, there are splinters and stuff all over those things, and I, you don't want one of those in your wrist. I've been there in the emergency room when they're taking those out of guys, too, and that is much fun. And like I said, we'll size everybody who's in here. Um, like I said, you guys want to watch how we're doing it. I mean, you're more than welcome to. Um, like I said, you're going to help me out there Roy, sure, again, yeah. too. What we're going to do is we give you your size. A, we want you to uh, remember it, but B, we want you to write it on that form. If you look down in here where it says whichever belt you decide to go with, the MX up top or the Q88GX on the bottom, you'll see where it says D size. Write that number down beside it, okay? And if you have any, like I said, if you have any questions that come along moving forward, feel free to contact us at all, anytime you need. The thing about it is some guys are talking about getting different stuff um, pricing wise, you can't check their prices online, you just have to call us because it's a special code just for you guys. So. Todd just mentioned to me too that I might want to mention to you guys the importance of uh, keeping health insurance. You know, if you're on your parents' policy and can stay on it while you're in school and stuff, that's great. Uh, you know, it's infrequent that accidents happen, but accidents do happen. Underground cables, when we're working in there, we usually get a bleeder or two every year where somebody slips with their knife and has to go and get stitched up and stuff, you know. And uh, ha having insurance can obviously save you a lot of money. You know, if you were to uh, 
fall and you know like I said if they're adjusted properly and stuff you can't fall more than two feet but we've had guys come down just a couple of feet but because they get going a little bit and stuff and then the, the number one tendency when you're a brand new climber and you start to fall is to grab the pole and hug and you fill yourself up with splinters or I've seen guys go to hug the pole so hard that it sounds like a woodpecker but it's only usually just one big clunk you know, and I've had the bill of their hard hat go to the end of their safety glass and their safety glass go into their eyebrow. You know, and split their, just like they got a good punch in the eyebrow. The cool thing is your eyebrow goes back after they shave it off to stitch you up. And you can't even tell you got a scar there. But, uh, you know, I've had guys, so keeping health insurance and stuff, if you can, or having health insurance can be real important. Just to cover for any, any catastrophic thing or any injury that could occur. This is for the um, the guys who are watching this here too. Go to bashland.com. You can cross-reference everything that's on that list. You can look at an actual picture of it up close on our online catalog. Okay, so and they have videos that describe the use of a lot of their tools and so on as well. Yep. You guys here too. Before you leave, there's catalogs over here. You want to take the catalog and say, hey, this is actually what I'm getting, or I want to sub uh, substitute A for B. That kind of a deal makes it a little bit easier for you. So. Okay, so everything out of your back yep. pockets and so on will get you measured hey, up for your belt. Yep. If I could just jump in and wrap it up for the people on line up there. The biggest thing I want to tell people is that come this summer, I'm here all the time, Mr. Smith's going to be here a little bit this summer. If you have questions about tools, I am not your tool guy. What you wasting? I do not have questions. I do not know. You have to contact Bassline, contact Mr. Smith. So with that said, the orientation is pretty much coming to a close unless anyone up there has any questions. Um, you just simply have to unmute your microphone and we will be giving you your registration paperwork and all your orientation uh, packet in the mail by May 1st. It will all be to you and if you have questions once you get it, let me know. For any of you who have got college credits out there, make sure you have your college credits sent to me, sent to the college, so we can have that taken care of as well. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If not, you can feel free to go ahead and leave the meeting and these folks are just going to get measured for their tool belt. You have a question after Henry? Or are you saying bye? I was just saying bye. All right, all right, thanks. All right. All right, bye. All right, thanks, Henry. Okay. Hey, Mike. No. What, yeah, what Colin? Oh, um, yeah. If we're in this meeting, we so do either one we're just automatically getting registered for a class I'm next year? Or? Yeah, or Jackson, class. you're going to be all set. This is one that he was wearing. So, okay. um, I, right. I, I'll look and see what classes you've taken here already, awesome. and I'll get you registered. Like, you're all set. Yeah, the guys from class today, we did the same thing at 11 o'clock. So the guys in class, you just want to that belt. Thanks for joining. All right, same with you, James. Take care. Right here where it says D size. Yeah. Take all your take your phone out. Big John, take your phablet. <laughs> okay, so better turn around and look at me. What's your waist size start out at? Ryan, if you got a question, go ahead and just jump in. We got your last year. Before last? Did you have a question? Nice picture. Did you find that? You must have did something good. I'm a I'm a lineman for uh, health community. Oh, okay. You got a free shirt? Yeah. Do you want measured? I already have a problem. Okay, you got it. You're good now. Okay. Who's next? Where are you starting out at? Uh, Anybody else?